My name is John Rollins III. I've been working in student affairs and higher education for the last 11 years. I'm also a communications professional and a master's student working on my master's degree in communications. And I'm also a singer, songwriter, gospel artist, choir director, musician. All those things really make up who I am. The project to me gives a face to you know, mental illness and depression in our community, but I also think it gives a face to hope, right? It gives a face to those that battle with it, but shows that there's another side to that battle. You know, it shows who we really are. Sometimes when you're in depression or when you're depressed, you hear a lot of thoughts and negativity and, and things that try to bring you down or at least try to negate who you are. But I would say that this project reminds us of who we actually are and, and all that we can. Depression in the black community uh, is something that we've ignored for a long time. We've generally coined it as something else, right? Um, you know, in family settings, oh, that's just crazy uncle so-and-so, or, you know, sister whatever, she's not wrapped too tight, right? But we haven't really addressed what the actual issue is. When we talk about um, men in our community, especially, you know, when we talk about the black man, we want the black man to be strong, we want the black man to be resilient, to be the caretaker for the family. Um, but we don't also realize that there are these pressures and things to do that and other things just as, you know, working, living, those pressures can all uh, equate to someone who might be struggling with depression and not being able to really feel like they have that space to speak about it or, you know, they may feel like they're alone or they can't, they cannot express it because of the other, you know, things that we're looking for black men to be or even, just in our, even black women as we look at how you know strong they are, they're the backbone to the families, and so they've always got to hold things together. Well, if they're dealing with their own stuff and even in the midst of trying to hold things together, that can just be a lot. And so, you know, I think in the day and age that we live in now, it's important for our community to not just address it and to really talk about it, but to do it with intentionality, to really say, this is what's going on, right? We need to, yes, you know, and our, our community tends to be spiritual, so we think about prayer, we think about the Bible, we think about church, and all those things are great, I believe in those things. But I also believe in professionals who have studied and know how to help diagnose and help work through the issues that individuals like myself who've dealt with depression um, are dealing with and what they go through. So going to those professionals and finding out what does this thing mean? What is really happening? What's going on? What are the things that will help me to get through that, you know, that, that time or that season in my life? Um, and so really bringing that conversation to the forefront and not just putting it to the side, not just sweeping it under the rug, but being intentional about helping to make sure that we better ourselves and better our communities. Because also when I think about the black community and depression, a lot of times these things pass on generation to generation and we never talk about it. And so when you know so and so, you know, three generations down the line is dealing with something that they never knew went back from their parents to their grandparents and great grandparents, that leaves people in a very, very odd space, right? That leaves people uninformed, that leaves people to kind of fend for themselves and try to figure out what they should do. But if we talk about this now, we talk about it at a point where individuals can start to learn and to understand that on one hand, families can really rally together to help one another and be there for one another, and they can also be equipped and educated on what the symptoms are, what the triggers are, and how to work through those. I would say depression is, you know, the kind of, and I think from my own experience, right, the, it can be, you know, negative thoughts and feelings kind of pushing against who you are and trying to run and dictate what you do, right? I was in college when I went through depression the first time, and I would, I could barely get out of bed. I was, you know, sometimes just mentally, but oftentimes verbally asking a whole lot of questions 
kind of these whys, negating like where I was. I was in my senior year of college and thinking, well, why am I here? What's gonna happen next? What will I do after I graduate? You know, am I worthy to get a job in this field? Am I, do I need to go to school? Like, there were so many things going through my mind and I felt like they were kind of these negative thoughts and negative um, things that were pushing against who I really was and what I am. And I think, for me, that's where depression is, right? And it's, it's, it's a battle. Right? It's not something that kind of switches on and switches off, um, but it's something that you constantly have to think about, constantly work through um, in order to get through. Talk. I think the biggest thing we have to do is be able to talk about it. When I was first going through my own depression, um, it was one of those things where I didn't want to talk to anybody about it. Um, but it literally, I, re I remember um, feeling and even looking back with my friends who were really around me and helping me walk through it, one of whom was a psychology major. Um, it, I, I really, I, I kind of felt like I transformed into a different person. I wasn't the, the chipper, outgoing leader that I always been. I closed myself off to people. I kind of did things because I knew I needed to do them and I was obligated to do them, but then I would go back and kind of, you know, shelter myself in my room and not want to, you know, talk to folks. I didn't eat a lot, I, you know, didn't get a whole lot of sleep either. I was missing classes. Um, but one of my friends, one of my closest friends, encouraged me to go and talk to somebody and talk to a professional who happened to be a um, black male psychologist that worked on the campus. He was the only black male psychologist we had. Someone that I did have a relationship with before that, which I was grateful for. Um, but I was able to talk to him about it. And for me, that helped me to work through and to really think about how I could get past this stage or past this season. As I think and reflect on even more recently as I've dealt with issues of depression, um, being a part of this project, the Davis Project, the uh, Asha Kimalos Project, just in the talking about it um, and reflecting and even helping others through it has helped me when I felt like I'm getting back in that state, right? It hasn't avoided the fact that I'm in that state. I still go through some things, but I've been able to talk through and work through and it's made me more comfortable in that and talking through which has helped me to get through and work through things. And so um, for me, the, the one word literally is talk. It is my hope that this project will touch our community in a way that really does push them to start to talk. Um, and you know, talking to professionals, but also talking to each other and really starting to educate and read and to think about and to listen to what the various aspects are. Because you know, depression and mental illness is such a spectrum of things that can happen and how it shows up. Um, you know, it's not just the very obvious things. Some people kind of um, lean on these Hollywood visions or these Hollywood connotations of, you know, what that looks like. Um, but we need to be educated on the fact that it can look like a number of things. Um, and so my hope is that this project will help people to really start to talk and to deal with the things that actually already exist in our community. We just don't have word for them. Every believer has an awkward face, knows what to do, but she plays all the games, working overtime just to fit in. Can't accept that she's been set apart So what becomes of her broken heart? He said he'll take the shattered pieces And begin to mend Renew me and restore For your glory Oh Lord, I've been broken many times a very young age they call him preacher cause he knows what to say knows all the right time to lift up his hands to get up and dance and shout out hallelujah but there is something that he cannot hide it's all the pain that he feels down inside look into heaven screaming